Yeah, so preaching to this lady, she told me uh, I gave her the gospel, the full gospel, and then also sharing her John 3, 16. And she told me, you know, boy, she was like about 60, I would say, 60-something. And then she said, you know, boy, you should be humble. <laughs> she told me, you should be more humble. You shouldn't. I'm older than you, she said. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, I, was, I felt kind of like, like, wow, I did. I, just, I, I, I felt like I, I was preaching the gospel of peace, you know, which I was, you know, and and it was full of peace. There was nothing with no vibe, bad vibes or, you know, and she kind of went, I would just, what do you say, uh, rejected it, you know, <laughs> and I, I was like, wow. Yeah, all yeah. you can do is preach it, right? I mean, they're only yeah. called to, to share that, share the gospel, you know, plant those seeds. But uh, yeah. you should get to hear it. That's the main thing. Yeah. yeah was, and basically, I kind of helped her. She needed something off the shelf. I reached up, brought it for her, and then I got into a conversation like that. And but yes, and I mean, it happens though. I can. It happens to me a bunch where I preach the gospel and people. Um, they reject it or they have a question. Sometimes they they have they just told I even met people just totally don't believe. They said they just no. One time, yeah. <clears throat> or sometimes I meet uh, I met a couple, the husband doesn't believe in God, but the wife does. And and they both admit it, you know. And yeah. but still he was and but the part that time was the guy still was humble to hearing the gospel at least can faith come by hearing <clears throat> so the wife heard it and he heard it also and you know I, I told him you know god gives that increase in the person whoever believes onto the believer yeah, brother. yeah. yeah. and they just got to hear it i mean that's got to be tough for a lot of people is their marriage it's like one believes or one is believer one's not and yeah, yeah, you never know, man. Some somebody might hear it, and then you know, seeds planted, seeds planted. Somebody waters, and then one day it's like, yeah, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get revealed. God gonna reveal the truth to them someday. <clears throat> then they're gonna too, remember, huh? yeah. Then they're gonna remember that. Oh, that boy said the same thing. You see me? Yeah, the I mean, same they get hear it, right? It's um, yeah, there without excuse. But uh, amen for preaching. Yeah, that's great. I so know that gospel, I want to share that gospel with who's, whomever might be watching uh, here in this video. Yeah. Yes, that mm -hmm. um, God was manifested in the flesh and he was seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, received up unto glory, died on a cross for the sins of the world and was buried in a tomb. <clears throat> and on the third day, he rose with the power of God and was seen of many people, even above 500 brethren at once. And Paul was the last to see Jesus, according to the scriptures. And we share that same gospel that was told unto Paul. And rejoice evermore. God bless. Amen, Daniel. What must I do to be saved? And they came out and they said, Sire, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Amen, brother. Just believe. <clears throat> Just believe. And you know what? Um, I just saw uh, my last preaching video that I did that was recorded. That lady, I wish I recorded that like a couple minutes before I started because she was so awesome. And this old lady, she was, um, she was, she was so humble to the word and she was correct on the scriptures. I was, was, was a, was a rejoiceful moment, you know. Thank God. Uh, Amen, and she was kind of Asian because usually a lot of the Japanese people or that I meet, they believe it, like they worship Buddha, you know, and all that. So, especially the elderly ones, the elderly ones, they, they're um, like you know, more so sort of the Buddha. It's amazing, you know, with the, how we preach over the internet is we reach people from all over the world. You know, that's uh, even our fellowship is all over the world, but uh, the people we preach to is every, you know, Africa, Asia, Europe, yeah. South America, North America, Australia. Like it's, 
is all their sound went out into all of the earth. As people are hearing the gospel. It's awesome. You know, brother. Again, sometimes, uh, sometimes I get to preach to the, some of our locals, like the Hawaiians and Samoans and all that too down here. Yeah. And our ancestors. I always bring this up when I have a chance. I bring up. You know, our ancestors used to worship other gods. You know, they used to worship different gods, many gods. You know. What we're sharing right now is the creator, God, the creator, you know? The one true God, yeah. Yeah, the one and only true God. And that's that's what we, that's who we preach. We, we we give him that glory, you know. Not Amen. not the not the creature, you know, not the goddess of fire or the goddess of the of the ocean or the goddess of the land. No. We worship the creator. His name is Jesus. Capital J E S U S, you know he is. He's called. He also is called the Father, the Everlasting Father. He also is called Almighty. You know. Yeah, let's look at that. Yeah. Isaiah nine six. Yeah, God is, has many names, but He has a name that is above every name that is given unto men. Where must That's we right. be saved? <clears throat> Amen. I don't mean, I'm just going to share the scripture as you speak there. Then Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. There's prophecy about Jesus, right? Jesus' name is called these things, including the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father. And you made the point there too, brothers. Um Name which is above every name, the only name whereby we must be saved. Yeah. Um, I was going to share on mm -hmm. that uh, Acts 4 10. It says, Be it known unto all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for the, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So that's right, brother. It's only the one name yeah. you can be saved by. And what there we must be saved, name. so to share what you mentioned earlier, is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to believe that gospel. Believe on Jesus. It's not your works. Yeah. Amen. Brought them out and that's said, the name above all names. Saved. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved in thy house. Yeah. And I, I'm, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff like, you know, and you preach, cause I know in Hawaii, there's a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses too, Catholics and all that too. And the That's thing the I know that the, the, is it is the, the, the gospel is what um, they must believe first. And they believe that gospel and then things fall into place, I would say. Amen. Yeah, the understanding yeah. comes after, right? God's Spirit will give you understanding. Yeah. The believer who receives God's Spirit is born again, right? For yeah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Believeth, yes. I must believe, right? Amen. To receive, you know, everlasting life, forgiveness of sins <laughs> to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And then as mentioned, like, um, you know, the world's religions, man's religions, Catholicism, sorry, Catholicism and Jehovah's Witness, things like that is yes. I think all these institutions are man-made. But if you go to what God says in his word, remember God says, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings yeah. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, mm -hmm. you know, men can say anything. They can make up any religion, right? But what God says in his word is perfect. He said, God cannot lie. That word is truth, right? So, yes, they try to. Um, says, I know this. Those religions, it's, it's not your works that get you to heaven. It's, the it's reason that we can contradict, we can contradict it all if it is in the word of God. The word of God is truth. Yeah, that's why. And if we can point out those things, because there's probably things that they've never heard, like there's little pamphlets, you know, you know, show me in the Bible that you, we need to pass out pamphlets or or um flyers and pass it to every door because when i when i when i hear them preaching or if you want to call it preaching then i don't i don't hear the gospel you know they're not they don't they won't they will not um especially the jehovah's witnesses 
They're not going to um, boast about Jesus. You know what I mean? They're not going to um, um, believe in the name above all names that was given unto men. They're not going to, they're going to reject it. And what we, as our job as preachers, we must go right straight into the word and let the word be true. Amen. Every yeah. man a liar. And that's how yeah. you, we, as preachers, that's our job. It's like, you know what? I'll have to disagree with you on that because it does not say that. And that's when we stand bold for the Lord. And that's when we, we get into arguments or this, but that's not, Jesus already told us what's going to happen when we follow him, you know? He already yeah. warned us what's going to happen to us. So yeah, you're ready this, for it. This world you shall have tribulation. Whole armor. Right? In this world you shall have tribulation. Yeah. It's about be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that, he that is, is in the world, right? Yes. You know, the truth is the truth. You can't change it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna reject it. They're gonna they're gonna um, deny it. They're not gonna confess the Lord Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Um, because of course, confessions with the mouth, but believe it in thine heart. Yeah. Thing with that but too, eh, brother, is that these like Jehovah Witness religion, for example, is that yes. they, they they carry the the King James Bible to people's doors, right? And they come to my door with the King James Bible, the pure words of God. Yeah. And I'll say, let me show you something in the scriptures. Yeah. And but they don't actually believe that those are the words of God. They'll say, well, this was um, interpreted or, or translated or something a different wrong way or something. They'll try to say that, right? They don't believe yeah. the actual word of God. So when, like you pointed out, is the name yeah. Jesus is the only name uh, whereby we must be saved, right? Um, this is this is like above every that name. Took, it's above the name took Jehovah. God's name out. They, they, they like to say that they took God's name out a thousand times, I think, in the Bible or something. They do they in their version, that, right? Like their version yeah. from their uh, Watchtower Society headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, is like what they do is they send out uh, re material that's, you know, man-made, obviously. Yes. And it's followed. It's really followed strongly. But they also have their own uh, uh, version of their own Bible. It's not obviously yes. God's word. But then yeah. they also they go with the King James Bible and they say, well, you know, it's a good, it's good, but it's, they don't believe it though. Cause you show them in the scriptures, you read the scriptures to them and they don't believe that the name Jesus is the name, which is above every name. They think Jehovah is above the name Jesus. They don't understand that the man Christ Jesus came in the name of the father. Jesus is the name of the father, just like Jehovah. Is. He went by yeah. Jehovah. He went by, I am, he went by, um, Ja, he went by the Lord. He went by many different names, but the yeah. name Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. Yeah, amen, brother. Welcome, Don. Yes, brother. That's what it is. And they, they even if you, even if you put the, they, they said they took the name Jehovah out. So if we go into Exodus and it was show that, um, I think it's chapter four or something that this, they said Jehovah, I was not known unto them. He's talking about Jacob. Isaac, you know, and he said, Jehovah, I was not, that name, I was not known unto them. And if you bring that scripture out, they're going to try to use that, but then you can bring the scripture where the name above that was sent, you know, the name of Jesus to, that is above every name, every knee should bow. So when you start to share these scriptures to them, they're going to be pricked to the heart. And you can sense it, and you can you can be like, hey, wh wh why are you rejecting it? It says it, you know. So they they're not gonna believe on the name of the of Jesus. They they they, they believe in the name is Jehovah. They, everything is Jehovah. And okay, that's what it goes I know. Back to your first yeah. point, yeah, I know is faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, right? They they're not. Yeah. Gonna, you're just telling them your own words, and you know, it's not gonna do them any good unless you're. You know, maybe you're giving your report of the gospel as well, but is literally the words of God are the pure words that are the sword of the spirit. They're the seeds that we're planting. They're they're sharp. They're powerful. They're yes. sharper than any two edged sword, right? It's um the word of God is is it's is spirit. The words are spirit and truth. So yeah, I mean it's uh when you're preaching to those people or like any people, you gotta be quoting scripture, that's for sure, brother. Yeah. Welcome, Dom. Eh? I don't know if you can hear. 
Uh, hey, Tom. Yeah, there, brother. Yeah, I'll I'll the just wanted to come and uh, support the channel. Hey, man, appreciate it, brother. Man. Yeah. Why should God let you into heaven, see, Tom? Um, Sorry, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm, my testimony is, uh, I believe from the heart that... Uh, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. He came unto his own people, the Jews. They desired for Pilate to, for him to be slain. And they crucified him on the cross. He died on the cross for the sins of the world. And he was buried. He rose after three days and he was seen among uh, many witnesses, about 500 brethren at once. And by believing that, I'm justified by all things that could not be justified by the law of Moses. And I believe in that gospel. Um, it's the only way to heaven, the only way that anyone can be saved. So, pray everyone listening, anyone listening, that they believe that from the heart. Jesus is God Almighty. He came in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. And the man Christ Jesus, the Son of God, was the mediator between God and man. Jesus is God, and Jesus is a man. Man, brother. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. But God is not a man. Let's be clear on that. God is not a man. That's right. So. God is a spirit. Amen. God is a spirit. Yeah. No, is that where spirit must worship him in spirit and in truth? Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? The gospel is so simple. It's, you know, scriptures talk about what well, God says in his word, the simplicity in, uh, in Christ and how. Uh, the foolishness of preaching. Well, it's not, um, and it's the most amazing thing that ever happened, but it's um, probably, but it's, um, at least for us anyway, and it's, uh, but it's like a lot of people think they got to actually put a lot of effort and work into being good enough to go to heaven, but it's a simple gospel is that you just believe on what Jesus, what he, he's already done for you. What Dom shared there. God is good for God to love the world. And he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is so good that he loves the world so much that he he gave uh, Jesus, the son of God. But unfortunately, um, Satan has, uh, you know, dominion over this earth and he made it a lot more complicated than God, the grace of God. So that's why that's we get these religions and these religious people that you know, put a lot of effort into going to heaven. It's unfortunate, but and we know the reason why. It's just unfortunate that, uh, you know, their hearts aren't ready and they believe, you know, the works of the devil rather than believing in Jesus. Amen, brother. There is no truth in the devil and um, the whole world lieth in wickedness. It's we're just shining that light of the gospel out there. If you believe it, if you hear and believe it, that's how you receive Eternal, eternal salvation, forgiveness of sins, you will go to heaven if you believe that gospel. If you believe that Jesus manifests in the flesh, he is the son of God. Jesus is God also, because it's, it's his name, the Father's name. But God the Spirit sent his only begotten son, the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, was buried, rose. He came unto his own. His own received him not. The Jews had him killed and killed him. He was buried. He rose again the third day, and after that, he was seen alive of, of witnesses. Many many saw him alive after that. And it was all for the forgiveness of sins. Rejoice evermore. If you believe that, that's all you got to do is to receive the free gift. You can't work for a gift. The scriptures call it the free gift. So it's um it's not something you can work for, but you just receive it by believing that gospel. Believe Jesus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as concerning the gospel... The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Amen, brother. Yeah, Romans eleven twenty nine. But I, I got, I got to make a phone call real quick, guys. I got, I'm on my phone, so I, I'll uh, catch you guys in a little later. Yeah, sounds good, brother. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. point there. Eh? Romans eleven twenty nine. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Right, God's not going to change His mind about His gifts. You know, His gift is uh, eternal. Once you're saved. Once you've received salvation, received the free gift of eternal life, that's yours forever. That's an e that's eternal life. Oh, there you go. 
Welcome, Kale. Sorry, brother. Hey, what's up, right brother? There. there he is. There he is. Yeah, yeah. And we were just talking about. I said, Mike, we hadn't heard seen you do a study in, in a minute. Good to see you back, brother. Yeah, I've been too long. That's for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What are we preaching? The gospel? Gospel. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ is God, the everlasting Father. Some people don't like that fact, but He's God, the everlasting Father. Uh, that's that's been preaching the scriptures according to the scriptures. He uh you know he was manifest in the flesh. That's what that's what it tells us. First John 3 16. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, so we preach it. Paul talked about preach according to the scriptures in first Corinthians 15. Uh, you know, so I want to preach according to the scriptures. Paul didn't preach that gospel outside of scriptures, he quoted scripture, so we will too. So Jesus is God, the everlasting Father, manifest in the flesh. You know, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He uh, died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried, risen, and seen. And I believe that that's the only way to be saved is through Jesus, believing on that. There you go. And it says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures so that means the not only his scriptures but also the scriptures in john that we quote in first john and peter so we we're supposed to preach according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day guess what according to the scriptures so when john 5 you know john uh when jesus says i you know unless you believe that i am he you're dying your sins you got to go according to the scriptures so yes peter did preach and paul did preach according to the scriptures and so should we amen that was a question that came up was it um whether that would be part of the gospel to be preached was uh the i am he that jesus is and whether this this these lines are talking about jesus being being god yeah, well, you know, you get people that don't believe that you have to believe that, that God, Jesus is God in order to be saved. No, you do. You have to believe that he's not only the son of God, but he's also God. Uh, unless you believe that I'm he, says I'm from above, you're from beneath. So it's very clear, you know, that he's the holy one. He's God, the holy one. He's the holy one of Israel, and he's the holy one of God. He's both God and man. He's the son of man, the son of God, and the everlasting father. So it's uh, you, you got to preach the true Jesus. Jesus is not just a man. He's God and man. That's the true Jesus, the holy one of Israel. And that's what Paul preached. That's what Peter preached. He never preached just man. He always preached the God man, the holy one of Israel. Isaiah 43 makes that clear that God is the Holy One of Israel, and we must preach that. We must believe that, first of all, in order to be saved. So if you don't believe it, you're not saved. And then if you want to properly preach the gospel that Paul preached, you must preach that, unless you're a curse. So, so if you look at it, yeah, in Acts 13, if you scroll on down, yeah, right there, it's 35. This is Paul. Wherefore he... Uh, uh, saith also in another psalm he's quoting scripture according to the scriptures thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption where do you go I mean God is the holy one and the man Christ Jesus is the holy one so you can't separate we, we should not separate the holy one I have some interesting uh, scripture I always found it interesting where he said, um, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. That's right. Amen. Well, even if you're believing on the man Christ Jesus, you're actually believe it seems by that scripture to me that you're also I'm believing on him, him who he sent or who sent him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So he's uh, he's letting them know that that's the mystery of it. It's like, hey, you're not only you when you're believing on me, you're actually believing on a father. That's right. And so um, we must understand that. Yeah. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. Amen. And if you look at First John 2, 
Was it first John four? Oh, let's get them mixed up. But look, at it. I always thought that was interesting because said God, no man hath got seen God at any time. That's I said, right. He that seeth me hath hath seen him that sent me. Yeah. It was the image. You're still not seeing God. You're seeing the image of the invisible God. Yeah. Yeah, just like I'm seeing your image. I've never seen you. I've never met you. <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting how he says, though, like, hath seen him. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So that's how they've seen him. You can't see spirits. He's manifest in the flesh. So seeing his manifestation. Um, Express image of his person. Is that where the line is his image? Yeah, first, uh, that's in uh, Colossians 1. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. we asked Philippians 2 to express the image of his person. That would be Hebrews 1, I mean, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, that's, that's one of them. But uh, Colossians 1, yeah. I think it's Colossians 1. After, yeah, right there. Who is the image Who is of the image of the invisible God? See, God is invisible. The firstborn of every creature, invisible means we can't see him in, in our bodies. So he's the yeah. image. Of, so no one has actually seen God. We've seen his image. So that's how we've seen God. So, so when the man Christ Jesus is saying, "He that hath seen me," he's saying about himself, the image, the body, the man. That's man right. Christ Jesus. Well, who yeah, is the that. image? Yeah, so that's so we've seen him, the man. <laughs> they yeah. have seen. So that's where he's letting them know. Just like if I'm seeing I'm seeing the image of you, Michael. I mean, that's how you look in person, but I've never seen you in person. So um, you know, so that's that's what he's saying. So you're seeing that image, but you're not actually seeing the spirit. God is a spirit, he's not an image. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what he's saying. And then Jesus even said in John 3, no man has seen God at any time. Yeah. But yeah, so so it's very clear. Um, but we've seen the image, or they've seen the image of God. We haven't seen the image yet. But um is it first John four? Oh no, second that's second John. One, eight, and nine. See, that's that's what that the false doctrine wants you to do is lose your rewards. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. See, so we're working towards that, but that we receive a full reward. See, so we want to receive a full reward. See, you don't want to lose your Lord rewards, or it looks like you can lose partial of your rewards. I want all my rewards. So. And, you know, I'm not going to be one of those that's transgressive, whosoever transgressive and abide of not in the doctrine. See, abide in that doctrine. See, so if you leave that doctrine, you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, the Messiah, have not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he have both, both the father and the son. See, <laughs> he both the father and the son, not just the son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine and receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed, for he that bid of him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. So that's why we don't we don't bid bid them Godspeed that don't take in that doctrine. So there come any unto you. So even if you think that they're a brother, they don't believe that doctrine. Both the Father and the Son you got a problem. I think it's interesting. A lot of a lot of people out there that um, aren't sure about their salvation. They think they're, you know, they call themselves a Christian, and they they're not sure about their salvation, or they think uh, they don't understand um, that Jesus's name, that name Jesus, is the name of the Father as well as the man Christ Jesus. So I think it's sort of, um, you know, even even people would say it's not their works to go to heaven. It's it's still if they're not believing that. You know, Jesus is God. That that seems, I guess, another gospel because, um, because when Jesus walked the earth, he said, 
unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Yeah. So he's telling them what they what they have to believe not to die in their sins. So it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, a lot of people I think are just uh, not sure about the, or they're just uh, they never heard it at the building they attend and stuff like that. They just never nobody ever preached it to them. But that's why we're making these videos, getting the word out. This is the gospel. This is what people need to hear and believe with your heart to receive eternal life and forgiveness of sin, salvation, and you'll go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's not your works. Ephesians two says. It's by grace, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not about doing good works or, or being good to people or turning from sin or doing any kind of thing like that. Is What you must do is just hear this gospel, believe it with your heart, and that's it. Otherwise, you're trying to earn a gift. You're trying to work for a gift. But you can't receive it that way. You can't pay for it. And again, the gospel is that uh, Jesus, who's God manifest in the flesh, he came into his own, his own received him not, the Jews. Uh, the man Christ Jesus, who's God in the flesh, but the man Christ Jesus, who is that flesh, not God, but the man Christ Jesus, was killed by his own people, the Jews. They had him crucified, and after he died on the cross, they took his body down, they buried him. And then three days later, he rose from the grave alive. And after that, he was seen alive of many witnesses. And that was all done for the forgiveness of sins. So you receive that free gift, forgiveness of sins, if you believe that gospel. It says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Amen. Amen, brother. How's everything going on over there in California, Cali? Uh, Kel? I've seen some some stuff on TV there. I don't know if any of that's true or what, but is uh, yeah. well, you know, TV always uh, sensationalized, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, make it bigger. But I really, honestly, I don't know. I've just been busy working and busy with family, and you know, busy with stuff that I don't have time to be dealing with. Uh, you know, any of that drama, or whatever. Hey, man. Um, oh, good. This firmware might help upgrade the firmware on this device. I've been trying to fix this device. But, uh, yeah, God has been blessing. You know, business doing well. Family's doing well. You know, can't complain at all. Okay. But, So I think you guys want to look at in the scriptures. I guess we're waiting for um, Dom said that he'd be back. He had to take a call or something, but he said he had a couple of people that wanted to a um, uh, couple guys wanted to join a study that were in part of a I guess they, what do we call the Mormon religion or something like that. They wanted to join a, join the study. So I guess maybe we're waiting on that. Perhaps. Seems. That's good. Doc. Yeah, glad to hear everything's going well for you there, brother. God's good. Dan, you still there? Yes, I'm still here, brother. I still about to walk into Home Depot. All right, brother. I'll just uh, I'll just be reading the scriptures, preaching then. That's cool. I'll listen. I'll listen in. All right, brother. Yeah. Okay, brother. Again, is um, you know, a lot, a lot of what's taught out there in in the church, they call them church buildings, right? But if you, again, it's one of those things you got to go to the Word of God for the truth. He said that Word is truth. So even the word church, as uh, the Scriptures show it to be, is it means something different than what man would say, right? So for everything you ever were taught by a man in a building, you got to hear the Word of God. You know, first you got to hear the gospel, believe the gospel, then you'll be saved. You receive the free gift if you believe the gospel. That's all you have to do to receive the free gift. And once you receive that free gift, it's eternal. Eternal life is eternal. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So then God will give you the understanding and you, you'll come to see his word, his truth, and that men out there in the world, they make up a lot of stuff. And it uh, 
nobody get to heaven that way because they're believing in their works. Like if, like for example, when I went to those buildings too, they would say like, say a sinner's prayer, accept Jesus into your heart, turn from your sins, give your tithes, whatever they're telling you to do to go to heaven, that's all works, right? But what we must do, what God says you must do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to believe the gospel for the God, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to who, to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also the Greek. So I pray you believe that. What's up, Preach T? Hey, man, how you doing? Good, Tyrus. What's up, Preach T? What up, Dale? How you doing, buddy? Doing good, brother. I miss y'all, too. I ain't seen y'all, too, in a minute. I know. Yeah, you <laughs> see you guys for a minute, yeah? yeah it's been too long, eh? <laughs> too yeah. long, so, like, I've been reading, though. still studying. I read you guys' scriptures. I've seen some of you guys' videos, too. Yeah, we've been trying to do like at least a chapter a day. Yeah. But uh, um, definitely trying to keep the reading going and obviously preach for sure. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm in here. Got to drop my report real quick. I'm going to heaven because I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, who was manifest in the flesh. He went to his own people, the Jews, and they received him not. They put him on the cross, and that's where he died, paying for all the sins of the world. They took him down from the tree. I'm going to jump right back in. But he rose. I think it's called day. Man, Amen. Yes, Jesus is uh, alive. He rose from the grave. He was seen alive by many witnesses. Uh, John 1 12, it says, but as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And uh, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus said, I come in my father's name. The name of the father is Jesus. Those are just facts that we preach. Amen. <laughs> Glad to be here. Hey, Amen. Welcome to you. Yeah. So it is. People need to hear this gospel, right? It's the only way to go to heaven is if you believe it. You can't do it by your works. You've got to just believe this gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And the back. Yeah. yeah. Forgot my mask. <laughs> walk all the way to the door. I walk all the way back down. So I'll just read from Acts 13 here, if that's all right. Yeah. So I can read from um I read from 23 here. It says, Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. See, this is the word of this salvation. is It's the word of our salvation. That's how we're saved. You believe the gospel. You believe the word of God, the gospel in the word of God. And uh, here you see that uh, they knew they knew him not. You know, the Jews, they that dwell at Jerusalem, they knew him not. They didn't know Jesus. They, they denied him. They didn't believe on him. They didn't believe the voices of the prophets because the prophets testified of Jesus. And um, they fulfilled the, the scriptures um, and the prophets in condemning Jesus. So those that they that dwell at Jerusalem were actually the ones that condemned Jesus and had him killed and, and did kill him. And though they, same Jews, found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. So Jesus is not worthy of, you know, he did nothing wrong, you know, to deserve death. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus never sinned. But anyway, though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, so that's quite a lot of things that were written about Jesus all through the, the scriptures in the Old Testament, but they fulfilled all that was written of him. They took him down from the tree, took his body down, and laid him in a sepulcher. They buried him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. So Jesus didn't stay dead. God raised him from the dead. And he was seen. This is after his resurrection. He was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, 
who are his witnesses unto the people. So he was seen by witnesses. So a word of your salvation here, we see that the Jew, he came unto his own, the Jews, they had him killed. They had, you know, they, they, they killed him. They put him on a tree. They, they buried him. They took him down. They buried him. God rose him from the dead. And then after that, he was seen by witnesses alive. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption. But he, whom God raised again, saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. This gospel is for the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe, so that's everyone that believes this gospel, if you believe it with your heart, and by him all that believe, well, what, what do they get or what, what happens to them? Are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. The law of Moses was all the laws, the carnal commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, um, thou shalt not commit adultery. All these commandments, these laws, the law, it's holy and good and just, the law, because it shows us that no man could keep it. We're all... We're all sinners. But Jesus kept the law perfect for us. He never sinned, but he was put to death for our sins. So he took the place, like he he took that, pen that penalty, that punishment for us. The iniquity of us was laid upon him. So that's God's great love and his great gift that he sent his only begotten son to do that for us. He was like a lamb, like a lamb led to the slaughter for us, for all the things we ever did wrong. And no one could ever keep that law but Jesus did because he was God manifest in the flesh. God's spirit kept him holy, right? It's the power of God. He does it for the believer today. You'd be born again. You have, you'd be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Like you, you, you know, if a believer does something wrong, I mean, that's not what God would want you to do. You don't lose your salvation because you're a son now. You're in the kingdom. You've inherited eternal life and that's forever. They'll never be taken from you. But Jesus lived perfect. He never sinned. He never did anything wrong. So we receive his uh, righteousness if we believe on him, as Romans 3 and 4. Sorry, Romans uh, Romans 4 in... Uh, yep, Romans 4, starting in like 2, I believe. Starting up at 2, thanks. Uh, for if Abraham were justified by works... So again, we're talking about it's not your works that get you to heaven. What you must do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe this gospel to receive that gift, the free gift. For if Abraham, if Abraham were justified by works, he, ha he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham did what? Believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So here's him to him that worketh. Somebody's trying to work to go to heaven, do good works to go to heaven, feed the poor to go to heaven, say a prayer, whatever. You, your reward is not reckoned of grace. It's not a gift of grace. It's something you're trying to earn. It's of debt. You're trying to pay for it. But to him that worketh not, but does what? Believeth on him that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Or just one quick one I want to share. I think it's actually Galatians 3 or 4 I was looking for. Um, so Romans 3, I think. Uh, Galatians 3.22, uh, maybe? Yeah, I'll go right there after. It is 3.22, because it's Romans 3.22 also is the other one line I was looking for. Thanks, brother. Okay. Even the righteousness of God, so it's God's righteousness, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, 
unto all and upon all them that do what? That believe, for there is no difference. See, his God righteousness is unto all and upon all them that believe. So that's how we receive his righteousness. And um, yeah, I'll go Galatians here. There's one I was looking for. I look it up. It's not Galatians, but uh, if it's not, the one where it says it's imputed. But this is all great scripture here. I'll just look this up real quick, and then I'll. I'll uh, 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 let me see. I think you actually keep here. reading. Uh, go back to Romans uh, four. I think it keep going after like uh, you want where it says he won't impute sin, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's in four. Go four twenty two, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. So this is all talking about. Um, uh, go up to uh, like verse like nine or something. I think. Yeah. Cometh this blessedness then eight. upon circumcision only? Uh, verse or, eight. Is that eight. the one? Oh yeah, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Right, that's the believer, the one that believe, the man that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. That he's received the free gift of forgiveness of sins. He, God won't impute sin to that person. Come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. See, the Jews' religion was to do this work of circumcision to their, you know, their, their young men, I guess, children, young men. And basically, that was part of their works based um, to be to be right with God, like the, it was always to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But the law that, that they had was that was part of the law that they had. Was what I'm trying to say. And here is like talking about um, Abraham being the father of all them that believe, even those uncircumcision, the non-Jews, the ones who aren't in the Jewish religion, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham which he had being yet uncircumcised for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things, um, which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, for this reason, therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake, not written for Abraham's sake alone, not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, righteousness shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. Yeah. Hey, welcome, Bjorn. Bjorn in the house. What's up, preachers? Bjorn is in the building. And this picture, I got to find it. It's going to. How you doing there, Bjorn? What's going on, brother? Bless. Just Man. taking the day off today. And why should I let you into heaven? Because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, 
because I believe that God manifest in the flesh as the son of God. And uh, he came to his own people, the Jews, who betrayed him and uh, desired that he be crucified on the cross where he died for the sins of the world. And he was buried and rose on the third day. And he was seen by many witnesses. And it's because I believe on that gospel, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. So uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only son, begotten of God, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I rest in the finished work at the cross. So that's what I believe on Amen, Jesus. Brother. Yeah. And that goes for anybody watching, listening. That's what you must believe. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that gospel that we preached is that's how you receive the free gift of eternal life. There's nothing you can't add to it. You can't add works to it. That wouldn't be the free gift anymore. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that gospel. Amen, brother. Just read the scripture here. It says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So we know we're saved by grace. Ephesians 2 says, "By great, for by grace are you saved. So the gospel is of grace. Um, but but uh, another gospel is talked about in scripture. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. But then the very next line says, it's not actually another, which is not another so there's not actually another gospel, but some are deceived by lies, right? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, even Paul's writings here, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Right? That's a pretty stern warning is there's not another gospel. If anyone else preach another gospel, let him be accursed. As we said before, he's even repeating it in a way here. As we said before, so say it now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So that's not um. There's not another gospel than that. You got to believe this gospel, and that's it. It's not. There's nothing else you have to do to be saved. There's nothing else you can do to be saved. If you're trusting in something else, if you're believing in something else, if you're trying to do something. Other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't even. I'm not saying you have to try to believe or anything like that. I'm just saying all you must do. What God says is, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" And they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." And that's is that simple. You mean you don't have to repent? No, because repentance would be a work. What about have faith? Well, it's not your faith that saves you. So if somebody says they want to put their faith in Jesus to be saved, faith and trust and belief are all different things. So it's not, um, you can't be saved by your own faith. You receive Jesus' faith as a fruit of the Spirit. You're saved by, you know, you're saved through it. But your faith can't save you. That would be a work, your work of faith. Don't the devils believe? The devils believe and tremble, but Jesus didn't die for the devils. They travel because they know what their fate is. They know they have an appointed time of, of everlasting punishment. But Jesus didn't die for their sins. So you're telling me you can live in sin and kill people and rob people and rape people and murder people and do every sin in the book and still go to heaven? Everything be okay? If you're a believer, you'll go to heaven no matter what. You shouldn't do those things. But you're not. You're not you don't go to heaven based on what you do or don't do other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything apart from that is works, whether they're good works or bad works. And that free gift is eternal no matter what. So it doesn't matter what you do after you're saved, you'll go to heaven. But if you, you think that, if you think that trying to do those good things and not do bad things to go to heaven, then you're trusting in your works. You're saying I have to be good to go to heaven. That would be a work. Don't you have to be baptized? Well, Scripture says talk about two different types of baptism. One is, you know, the, the water baptism that John the Baptist um, conducted, I guess, for Israel at that time period. 
and the early the early uh, apostles. But for us today, no, that would be a work too. If you're to go up and put yourself in water or have somebody put you in water, that would be a work trying to earn your salvation. That's not even for today anyway. So there is one baptism, but that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the baptism of God's Spirit. And uh, that's what you receive when you believe the gospel. You receive God's Spirit. That's the spiritual baptism. So no, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. You are baptized when you're saved, but it's a spiritual baptism. Well, what about in the Greek and in the Hebrew, in the the original text, the uh, Talmud and the the uh, the Council of Nicaea, and uh, you know King James was gay and all that stuff. See, though, though, yeah, yeah, let God be true in it, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See, man has a lot of history. You can watch it, you can read it, but I wouldn't recommend watching it, reading it. I'm just saying it's, it's out there, it's prevalent, but it's, it doesn't stand to be the truth. God's word is the truth. So we have to go to the scriptures, and we have the perfect word of God today in the King James Version, the King James Bible in the English language. It's These are the pure words of God. God says, that were, um, their words are pure words. Right? There's many other things too. I'm sure that uh, these are the perfect words of God. There are no error in this book. It's the one true book that we have of God's word. But everything else, so you mentioned the Hebrew, the Greek. A lot of people want to say, believe in history and say, King James, oh, blah, blah, blah. Such and such year, these scholars got together, they dug up scrolls, all that history that men are trying to say is the truth. That's just men's history. It's not the truth. So they want to say, oh, this word came from that word in another language. But God says the opposite. He says in Second Peter that um, no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. So that whole man's history about King James uh, 1790, whatever, and these scholars in that university and these scrolls and all that stuff in Hebrew and Greek, that's just made up men's words. You know, St. Devil's doing the same thing he did from the beginning. Yea, hath God said, the first thing he said to mankind, really, to the woman. Yeah, he hath God said. So he's, we know his devices. But yeah, that's we got to go to the Word of God. Yeah, it's not a translation. Second Peter says, uh, "Yeah, I already, I already quoted it, but I can go there." Um, well, what about the Hebrew name Yeshua Mahamashuka? Hachu. <clears throat> well, you could you could mention any other name than Jesus, and it would it would be all, any other name but Jesus won't save you because. God's word says that uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, as the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In uh, Hebrews, sorry, te Acts 10, Acts 4, 10 through 12, and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby, must we, whereby we must be saved. So again, that like the name Hebrew, those Hebrew names or whatever other name, that's men's lies trying to say that the actual word of God came from manuscripts, came from scrolls, came from some other language when, when it never did. And even God's word says that the name Jesus came down from heaven. If you look in Luke 1, Matthew 1, uh, the name came from heaven. It's not even an earthly name. Yeah, but how do you know? You got to study the history, right? Don't you have to study all the history books? And it's just known in the original no. manuscripts. No, because then you're relying on uh, men's history, which is not the truth. God said, yea, let God be true. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged, said thy word is truth. So God's word is the truth. God cannot lie. All men are liars. So you go to the Word of God and see what God says. I thought the world was the Israelites or the elect. Um, now show me the scripture. <laughs> the world is the Israelites? I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I was just talking to a guy yesterday and said that crap. <laughs> show me the scripture. What scripture says it? Yeah, I can't it find it, but it's in the Hebrew, in the original Hebrew. Yeah, see, yeah, that's that's what they say, right? That's the whole thing. Is the devil's doing the same thing he always did? Yeah, he hath God said, right? He wants 
He wants you to doubt the devil wants you to doubt these words, right? We know that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Even when Jesus was in the wilderness rebuking the devil, you know, the man Christ Jesus, he was tempted of the devil. And what did he do? He quoted scripture. And even when he quoted it, the, the word, the ones he chose to say at that time, one of them was man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, resist the devil. He'll flee from you. That word is truth. So, you know, if you, man can say anything, you know, you can read any other book, you can watch anything on a video, you can, men will just say all kinds of stuff about history and languages and all this stuff, but you can't take that for the truth when God says his word is truth and his word says it was never, uh, no prophecy of the scripture is of, is of any private interpretation. Therefore, it's not a quote unquote translation from another language into this book. This book was just given from God, the word of God. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I said, um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you believe it, that's the thing, right? I, you know, you, you just preach it, but pray, believe it. How, how do you preach it to someone in a different language? You mean they got to have the King James Bible to get saved? No, they don't even need a Bible to get saved. They just need to hear the preaching of the gospel and then believe it with their heart because he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. So just, the words are actually spirit. <clears throat> so even if somebody doesn't speak English, the words will still reach them spiritually. The words are spirit. So even a deaf man, right? it doesn't matter the language or anything like that. And then, of course, we're, you know, as preachers, we give our report of the gospel which is, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be word for word from God's word. You're, you're giving a report at, well, as you give scripture also, but the report itself can be in another language. So if somebody spoke Mandarin or Spanish or Tagalog or German or whatever it is, and they don't speak any English whatsoever, yeah, quote the scriptures out of God's word because God's word is God's word. It could, if God gave his word in a different language, that would be the book we would be quoting from no matter what we spoke. But Quote from God's word, but then you can um, you can give your report also in their native language if you, if, as you should, as said, you know, a report of the gospel. What about the the deaf and the dumb? Yeah, that's the same thing, right? So the words are spirit. So the words are spirit. Um, so yeah, they, it's not a physical hearing; it's a, it's a spiritual hearing. Yeah, so even if they can't speak, I mean, you don't need to speak to be saved. You just need to believe with your heart. So that's all. You know, it'll reach their spirit. They, um, I guess quote the scripture, but he said, uh, word that I speak to you, they are a spirit in their life. Spirit is invisible. That's not, you're not, you know, that's not something you need to physically hear with your eardrum. That's just those words will go to that person. Even Jesus, when he walked the earth, how many deaf and dumb people did he heal and reach and save? He died for all of them. What about the fearful? Sorry, what about who? The fearful? <laughs> fearful. <laughs> the fearful, sorry? Yeah, can they be saved? Anybody, yeah. Any Jesus died for everybody. So if you believe the gospel, you can be saved. You will be saved. There's no, there's no exceptions. There's no, um, there's nothing you can add or take away from that. What about the unbeliever? Yeah. Well, the unbeliever, if he was a believer, he'll always be saved. But if he never believes, then he won't be saved. So as soon as you believe the gospel, you're saved for eternity, no matter what. What gospel do they have to believe? They need to believe the gospel that is the gospel of Christ, which is Jesus, came unto his own. Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh. He came unto his own, the Jews, in the man Christ Jesus. And the Jews rejected him, and they killed that man Christ Jesus uh, by way of crucifixion on the cross. And after that, they took his body down from the cross and they laid him in a tomb, in a sepulcher. They buried him. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. And after that, he was seen alive by many by witnesses. And it was all for the forgiveness of sins. Rejoice evermore. So that's you just must believe that gospel. 
And that's God's great love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Anybody else got any questions? Sound good to me. Sounds <clears throat> legit. Yo, do you believe um, John the Baptist is saved, Michael? <laughs> I don't know, man. I have no idea. It's hard to say uh, um, with any 100% sureness just because God's word doesn't say one way or the other. But um, if I had to guess, I would say no. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree strongly. God's word says it. <laughs> God's word says. Look at John. Let's look at John 1. Was not saved. Yeah. Let's look at John 1. Yeah, Sorry, did you say John? God's word says. Point. Yeah, word Jesus forward. says it. But look John. at John 1 1. I mean, 1. Jesus actually tells you about John. Yep. Matthew 11. Just plain. Yeah, because. And the other thing is. Precept upon precept. God's not the author of confusion, right? He, he, everything must be done decently and in order. And he's got John who preached the baptism of repentance before his coming. I mean, and then when he came, uh, he would have been he would have been with Jesus following him. At least that would have been the first thing. And he and he even asked when he was in prison. Yep. He asked, "Are you the one? Or are we going to wait for another?" Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. If I had to guess, I'd say no. No, you don't look need at, to guess. Look at look at by scripture. But if you tell me, if you show me in the scripture where it says word for word, John the, the Judas Baptist wasn't was saved. saved. I'll yeah. believe God's word. Yeah. I'll, I'll guess he wasn't. I don't. Oh, know. Okay. What, what what word? What scripture says Judas wasn't saved? No, I live by the word of God. I know. What what scripture says that Judas wasn't saved? I didn't say anything about Judas being saved or not. I know. What word of God says that Judas was not saved? What scripture says that he was not saved? I didn't say he was or wasn't saved. Okay, so is he saved? What, what do you, what scripture do you want to look at? Yeah, so Judas isn't saved, correct? Or he is saved? Where does it say he is saved or not? So you do you believe that he's saved? Where is the word of God say? Yeah. No, I just want to know what you believe. Do you believe that Judas was saved? I believe the scriptures. So you don't you don't have a position on it? You don't believe if he was saved or not? I believe the word of God. I know you believe the word of God. So do you believe that Judas was saved? What does the scripture say? You you tell me. I don't know. know your position. He just wants you to take a position. Take a position. You got to make a position. Do you believe that he was saved or not? Show me the scriptures. So you you don't want to answer the question? I haven't studied it. I don't know. Okay, you don't know. Say that then. Instead yeah. of studying the scriptures, say you don't know if Judas was saved. That that that's fair. I can accept that. Let's say you don't know. Okay. But do, what do you believe if you got to take a wild guess, like you just took a wild guess? If I had John to guess, Baptist? like John the Baptist, I would say no, he's not. Okay, so you don't you believe that he wasn't saved? That's all I was just saying. I just want to know what you go by believe. the word of God. If the word of God says word for word, Jews was not saved. Yeah, like whatever God's word says, I what, believe. What what scripture that says this person was not saved for anyone? It, I didn't bring up the question. I know, but you're saying you're asking something of the scripture that it doesn't say for anyone. What scripture does it ever say for anyone? This person is not saved. I'm saying you can know the things that God says. No, but God you're asking, but you're scripture. asking something. You're saying have the scripture say that this person is not saved. Can you name one person that the scripture says this person is not saved? There's I not one. So you're one. looking for something in the scripture that's not there. Who brought up the question? Okay, so I just want to make sure you, you brought up a statement. You brought up a statement that the scripture doesn't support. It doesn't support um, telling someone that that they're not that uh, that um, the scripture does not tell you this person is not saved for anyone. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So then, how do we know if the person is saved or not? Is based off of what the scripture tells you about that person. Yeah, they, you can know, <laughs> sure, you can know what God that said. one passage that says that Judas believed or John the Baptist believed, 
all the other disciples believe shows something. that they believed. Like you what God that? says in his word, right? If he says yeah. it, believe that, right? But you, if he doesn't you see that, you see that all the other disciples, it shows that they believed. It does not show that John the Baptist or Judas believed. Right. That's why I would guess that he does not believe. Okay, so then believe. you don't have to guess. It's just based off of the scriptural evidence. Yeah, what is there for sure is what I'm saying. You can't yeah. say with 100% certainty. Okay. One way or the other, because God doesn't say it one way or the other, right? Like you can infer it. You can believe it okay. based on script line upon line. But I'm saying it's not 100%. Does it say, no. Okay, does it say that Jesus is the father? Word for word. But you're guessing that he's the father, or do you believe that he's the father? No, it says his name shall be called. But does it say that Jesus father. is the father? Yeah, but whose name is that? So I'm asking you, does it say it? No, the name Jesus is not there. The name Jesus is not there? What, in Isaiah 9-6 are you talking about? Yeah, I'm asking, does the scripture say Jesus is the father? No, I don't, I don't think it says word for word okay. Jesus is the father. Does it say Jesus is God? No, I don't think so. But you believe it? Or are you guessing that, that that's true? No, I believe it, yeah. Okay, that's what I was asking. What do you believe? That's all I was asking. There's clear believe? scriptures. You said you clear. believe what scripture says. So I don't know why you would take that stance on them, but you wouldn't take it on John the Baptist. I mean, it's all scripture. It doesn't outright say it, but you believe it. That's all we were asking. Yeah, but it, in if, in uh, Isaiah 9, 6, who is that, who's that scripture about? Oh, you heading out? Okay. Right? Like, how? why should you believe that this is about Jesus if it doesn't say Jesus? So, is it not about Jesus? No, I believe that it is. Okay. Yeah, no, it says it. It says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The son was given to the world. It's talking about the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yeah. So even like the scriptures do say that the name Jesus is the name of the father, though. Right? So even if you don't look at Isaiah 9, 6, is what I'm saying. Where does it say Jesus is the name of the father? Well, you look at a couple different scriptures together. But in exactly. Matthew, right? that's what he's trying to say. Yeah, but yeah, this that's what he's trying to say. Though, right? This is actual. You can see it like it's definitive. It's for sure. Like okay, it's show, show, show us. Yeah, just yeah. and Matthew, just show us. I know. Yeah, I'm just okay. saying. Matt, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name singular of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So what did they do is, you know, in Acts, through the book of Acts, they baptized in the name Jesus, right? So they were following that commandment to go and baptize in the name of the Father, which is Jesus. Therefore, the Father's name is Jesus. So those are actually there in the scriptures, right? I'm saying, like, like if I had to guess, I'm like 95% sure that John the Baptist was not saved. Like, I'm not, like, halfway, like, I don't know. Like, it's, I'm just saying, it's not something I can know with 100% certainty. That's all I'm saying. All right. Go to John 1. I'll show you. Go down to John, I think it's 16, or? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, right there. John, bear witness of him. This was he whom I spake, he that come after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Um, all right, head down to just a little bit further. Can't remember exactly which line it is. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, uh, oh there you go. 
uh, th in 30, this is he of whom, of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am coming, come baptizing with water, and John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending. From heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. So he said it twice. But he, he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So two accounts, back to back, he said he knew him not. But he bear record. And then if you go to... Um, hold on, i got to find it here. Um... I might have to shoot home up. Uh, you know where in the book of John, guys, where John was in prison? I just search it, yeah. I've seen the evidence of it. I'm just saying, I just not stated explicitly, is all. Oh, so it's well, it's just as much as we stand on the and are unmovable that Jesus is God, right? That's we live by that. I would say not just, we, not just some things you can know 100%, and some things you can be pretty sure about, I would say, because they're not expensive. I know 100% because this, because those are that are there's no no greater man on earth. What was it? Um, but J John the Baptist, but the ones that are least in the kingdom of heaven. Are greater than him so how can the least the very least the last person at the very bottom of the chain is greater than john the baptist so what does that make john the baptist michael um they say he not he would make him not in the kingdom of heaven because he's it says that notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he but was this when John the Baptist was still alive or was it after he was beheaded had anyone been in the kingdom of heaven when when Jesus prophesied in Matthew 11 11 sorry say again in Matthew 11 11 was that speaking of the kingdom of heaven during that time, or had anyone been in the kingdom of heaven other than God himself? No, I mean, because Jesus hadn't been to the cross and died and rose yet. So then, so then that's speaking about, that's prophecy, right? That's speaking about the future, right? Right, so he, like even his disciples at that time would not be in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. But there, he's speaking on the least in the kingdom of heaven. So how can the least in the kingdom of heaven be in heaven? So you're saying because there were the, people in the kingdom of heaven at this time? So, so there's going to be some that are the least in the kingdom of heaven, right? So this is after Jesus died and rose again and was the first one to ascend into heaven, right? After that, there is a kingdom in heaven. And the ones at the bottom of the chain, the very, very least, are greater than John the baptism in the kingdom. So where is John if they're greater than him? Because he's certainly not on earth because he died before Jesus. And he was the greatest man born of women. Yeah. Just so, yeah. Scripture uh, in that way, in that way before. 
Is that so? You're saying that this kingdom of heaven at this point is you're saying there's nobody in it at this point? And therefore, no, I'm saying that that Jesus was prophesying that the kingdom of heaven. He was prophesying what was to come, that there would be the greatest and the least in in heaven. Okay, and we know that because we 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 put on the armor and do what we can to be the greatest in the kingdom. And there are going to be some that are the least, and that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the kingdom. There is no kingdom without you can't just have the kingdom with just the king. So the kingdom is the people. So when did the kingdom of heaven start? Upon the thief on the cross um, being brought up to heaven and those that were preached to in hell. After Jesus ascended and was sat at the right hand of the Father. Then the kingdom, then the kingdom was there. I believe, I, I could be wrong. Maybe the king. I mean, maybe the kingdom is. I, I'm. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. That would be it. Yeah, kingdom of heaven. Because in heaven there is a kingdom, and there's going to be a kingdom on earth too. So yes. So the point is, is that John is least than the least in the in heaven. He's less than the least in heaven. There's only one position you can take underneath. If you're under the least in heaven then you're not in heaven. Yeah, I know. I see that part of it. Yeah, I, don't, I agree there. I just didn't know that this kingdom of heaven was at this point. I thought, I guess I thought he was, yeah, saying John Baptist is not in the kingdom of heaven at this moment. I'm currently speaking these words. Right. Well, there is no kingdom. Like the kingdom of heaven came yeah. into being at the cross, after the cross. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even think that the term kingdom of heaven had come to, to fruition yet. I think that it was God and his angels. Is that a kingdom? I mean, has he always been on the throne or has he always been king of kings? Is he yeah. king? And anyways, no matter what, it's talking about man right here. So no man had even ascended into heaven yet at any time. It was the first going to be the Lord. Jesus Christ was going to be the first in heaven, and Jesus hadn't even risen yet. So it couldn't have been a king, a pre-existing kingdom with men in it. What's the line you're quoting there, brother? Is it, uh, no man hath ascended up into heaven except for... I, yeah, I don't know the exact line, but we we know that that Jesus was the no was the first to ascend into heaven. No one came before him. He was sat down again, you know, next to the Majesty on high. He made him both Lord and Christ, King of Kings. So this is, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man, yep. which is in heaven. So at this time, was the Son of Man in heaven? No. Which is in heaven? Did the Son of the Son of Man, um, did the man Christ Jesus uh, come into existence in heaven, or did he come in uh, existence on earth? Well, he walked the earth. Obviously. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm the scriptures say here is the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Yeah, well, he came down from heaven. The man, uh, God came down from heaven um, and manifest himself in the flesh. Because hath the man, is past, Jesus. Is hath past tense, though, or... I'm back. Sorry about that. Have it is a, a, no man hath ascended up into heaven. Have has yeah. Period. Period. Yeah, I think that's past tense. And no man hath ascended up from that, heaven. But yeah, he, from that point that he spoke of it, and and yeah. prior to. Yeah. Yeah. And no man so hath ascended what, up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you go, just go back. Uh, to that other line that we were just at, the yeah, uh, Matthew was it? Uh, yeah, 
for uh, yeah. I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. But you got to be born of God to be yeah. the greatest. Even to be the least, you have to be the born of God. Notwithstanding that he that he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Yeah. So if you have the very least, yeah. Yeah, right, no, the guy that believed the gospel, and I got that part. Yeah. So, yeah. So if he's the know, lowest, God if you have not, the lowest man, yeah. Go ahead. God, God is not under uh, time in terms of you know he he has the names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so he knows who's in the kingdom of heaven. So it's not about oh well at that time he wasn't in the kingdom, but now he is. No, no, no. He knows who's in the kingdom of heaven because their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And oh, John, John the Baptist that. wasn't there. So he has the least and the greatest. He already knows what's going on. He doesn't have to wait like we do. That does make a lot more sense, yeah. I mean, it's um, I guess I, I never thought of it as like, yeah, God knows who's in the kingdom for eternity. I just, I guess I thought of it like, I can't know 100% sure because I don't know if John, if he believed on his deathbed or something like that. But I guess if, um, I do understand what you're saying, Bjorn, about uh, less than least in the kingdom would be outside, not in the kingdom. I understand that part. Yeah. But um, what Kiel yeah. said about uh, God knowing who's in the kingdom for eternity, that, that makes Well, me. he has it written down. God goes by the books. He's going to open up the books and judge everyone by the books. And he's going to judge us by his book. Um, or you know, by the good or bad that we've done, according you know to his word as well, but not in terms of judgment. But he's going to open up the books, and he's also going to open up the book of life. So he already knows who's written in the book of life, and he also knows who's written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those written in the Lamb's book of life are in the kingdom. Um, so he, he was teaching them all throughout Matthew about what the kingdom of heaven was like and what the kingdom of God is like. So he's just explaining that to them. Um, and then also, if you see before that, John the Baptist sent his disciples. Well, you know, John the Baptist should have been the first disciple, but he sent his disciples. He Why do he even still have disciples if the king of kings is here, if the Messiah is here? Why has he still got disciples? That shows you that he didn't believe. But he sent them to question Jesus if he was the one or should we look for another? There's not one passage that says that he believed. He says he knew him not. That's why he didn't know. That's why he sent them. Hey, are you the one or should we look for another? He knew him not. He did not know that Jesus was the Messiah. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He bear record, but there's you can bear record all day long. Bearing record is just doing that, bearing record. But you, you have no heart belief on what you're bearing record on. And you only bear record on what he was told to, this, he was sent to, to say. That was it. What he saw and what he was sent to say. So I believe the scripture that tells me that he only bear record never says that he believed. In John 2, 22, it tells me that all the disciples believed after Jesus rose. So it tells me that Peter and all the rest of the disciples believed. It never says that Paul, I mean, that John the Baptist or Judas believed. Never. Yeah, and he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't leave that. that they believed. Yeah, and he wouldn't leave that to a mystery for us. It's just very apparent. He had John who said he knew him not, that he bare record, that he had his own disciples, he never followed Jesus, never called him Lord, and he actually questioned if he was the one or if they should wait for another. He was always unsure. And you have God even God even said that he's the he's less than the least. So it's like for me, it's just like a dead giveaway more than Judas, almost. Almost. Yeah, like I, like I had known those like evidence of those uh, precepts, but I like I, I maybe prior to today I couldn't say a hundred percent certainty just because of the fact I didn't know mm. what went on before John Baptist heard before he was beheaded the very moment they you know, but the way Kale's talk the way the scriptures here and uh, Kale pointed in eleven eleven Matthew that you brought up Bjorn was how um, the kingdom of heaven is like God already knows who's in that kingdom. So I never thought of it like that before. I had always thought of it like this line where Jesus speaking is he's talking about the present. 
but like you said, if the kingdom of heaven didn't even come into being until, like, if it's eternal, like the the the, land, the names are written in that book from eternity, God knows who. Then um, this line of scripture would seem to apply to. And God is not the author of confusion. We have to understand that. So He's He's authored this book to us. Uh, when He deceives, He deceives. And he speaks in parables and deceives the 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 one that they cannot hear. But they that have ears to hear, those are the ones he's talking to. So he's not here to deceive us. He's going to make it plain. He's going to spell it out. Now, obviously, there you have to study to shoot thyself approve, you know, uh, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, but to, uh, I didn't quote it correctly. Forgive me, Bjorn. <laughs> but you <laughs> self approved unto God a work, then that means it's not to be ashamed, Amen. right? Dividing the word of truth. But again, that's what I'm saying is God is going to make it plain and clear to us what he he wants us to know. He wrote this book to us. It's for our sakes that he wrote this book. He didn't write it for his sakes, it's for us. Um think about yeah, think about the random people, right? that were listed as believers that, uh, you know, it said many believed on them, but didn't confess because they feared the people. Right. So like if God is stating that there are certain people that believe that weren't even named, we have a major player, John the Baptist. I mean, it would have been so clear. A lot was written about him. It would have been, it would have been stated that in his heart, he believed or whatever, or he followed Jesus and, yeah, I don't know. Like, something. it would have been said, like, God would have wrote this, yeah. but you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like I could have been 99% certain, but it's like if I think about it in terms of God knows who's already in the kingdom. So, this line of scripture you brought up is perfect. Like, that would, yeah. seeing it that way, knowing God already knows who's in the kingdom for eternity. I didn't think it, about it like that before. I just thought of it, it like, I can't, I can be 99.999 with a whole bunch of nine, sure. But, you know, if it, yeah. it, don't, it doesn't say either way at the end. But if, like I said, if God knows who's in his kingdom, then um, forever, then uh, Matthew 11, 11 seems to show that um, I, I already had, I knew like the least, of, like the less than least is outside the kingdom. Obviously part of the, I guess, evidence, the precepts of John the Baptist not being saved. But I never really thought of it in like an eternal perspective. And if I think about it that way, um, this line seems to, sh to really show it. Like, like, for instance, the topic of Pilate. Like well, that's something we've been kind of studying into yeah. recently too. Is we never nothing was said about Pilate, but more and more as we begin to dig in, into the condemnation of the Jews, and we look at what Pilate was standing for and what he would say and what he wrote. Yeah, I believe it was in his heart that he yep. was believing this stuff. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Can you scroll up so you can see what I was talking about? I think I got, I got to jump out uh, for a bit. I'll be back though. Okay. Yeah, see, now when John had heard, so it's the, 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 the script. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end. Oh, okay. Now when John had heard. Where are you reading? Um, two. Yeah, yeah, now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. See, that's a problem right there. I mean, he. why does he still have disciples? Those are his disciples. And he sent two. So it sounds like he had more than just those two. So John the Baptist never believed. If he truly believed, he would have took up his cross and followed him. That's what they were called to do at that time. So it's just, it's very, all the evidence is showing in scripture. And God is recording this so we can know. Um, and he says, and said unto him, art thou he that should come or do we look for another? So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, is he the Christ or should we look for another? That's why he said, that's why the, the Bible said it twice. That's why in John 1, it tells us he knew him not. This proves that he knew him not. And now Jesus answered and said unto them, go and shoe. This is telling shoe John again, those things which you do hear and see. See, so he's telling them again. It's not that he was not aware. He says again, he just didn't believe because the Jews require a sign. He had the signs. He heard the gospel of Jesus. He did not believe, period. 
It's very obvious in scripture what God is trying to tell us about John. And Kale, not to cut you off, but uh, we pointed out how John was in jail and what happened. And then when Paul was in jail, what happened? Yeah. When Jesus started his ministry, I think that was in Matthew 4 or something like that. How Paul was saved from prison? Is that Yeah, Paul was, but, but John the Baptist wasn't. Right. Yeah, there's so many uh, precepts, evidences to say that uh, he wasn't, John the Baptist wasn't saved like I was. Um, but less than the least in the kingdom to know that that's um, an eternal thing. That's how I would, would be the the word the God words, God's word says it clearly there. All the other evidences is like, yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. Like you can um, assume, I guess, but knowing that he's least in, less than the least in the kingdom and the kingdom is God knows who's in the kingdom for eternity. That would be the, how I would know with a hundred percent certainty and not like 99% surety, I guess. Yeah, man. That makes more sense, right? Because everything else, like I before, I could see, yeah, that's a lot of evidence. Like, I don't think he's saved. But it's like I could never know 100% because I was like, I wasn't there to know his heart throughout his whole, up to his death. But that line, 11-11, yeah, definitely, definitely shows it, I believe. Well, I mean, do you know that Paul and, and Peter are saved? Like, you know? yeah, I mean, Right? Yeah, I mean, I can believe it with, 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 yeah, with all my heart. Yeah. Well, because the Bible tells us that they that they believed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. it never tells us that John the Baptist believed. That's that's all I'm saying. So, if anything, we shouldn't say that he saved or believed because the Bible never says it. If anything, oh, no, it no, shows, no. shows yeah. evidence that he does not believe. It's very clear that um, he's asking. He says that he knew him not twice. So God is telling you he knew him not. That means he knew him not. Um, so you can't be saved and not know the Lord. You know the Lord once you're saved. He makes himself known to you. You know that, right? Yeah. 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 And so he knows you and you know him. Amen. So if he if he's if he's giving record that he knew him not, he says the world knew him not. The Pharisees knew him not, and John the Baptist knew him not. And he said John twice about John the Baptist that he knew him not. I mean, it's pretty obvious unless someone wants to not believe Scripture that is showing that John knew him not. And like you said, he's not even in the least of the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like all those all those evidences would would show would show me like ninety nine percent. Like I'm like he's I don't believe you, John Baptist is safe, but to know that um. He's less than the least in the kingdom, and God knows who's in his kingdom for eternity. That would be that would be like the only one scripture I would need to say John Baptist from sure he's not saved, but all the other ones definitely show it as well. Yeah. What was that one that was it John four? Um it was uh, uh, somewhere where he, Jesus just left him in prison. Uh we were just looking at that yesterday with Kurt. Yeah, he departed. Um, let me try to find it too. Yeah, there's no no doubt now in my mind, my heart that John Baptist was not saved. There's not there's there's no like ifs, I guess. After that, uh, understanding the scriptures uh, about the kingdom being God knowing who is in his kingdom for eternity. Yeah. Everything else definitely shows it, though. That's for sure. All the other evidence, all the other precepts. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Matthew 4, 12. I knew it was a 4 somewhere. <laughs> Good. Thanks for finding that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, look at Jesus' response. Did you find it, Matt? Uh, Michael? Sorry, John 4, 12, is it? Oh, Matthew 4, 12. Matthew 4, 12. Yeah. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee and leaving Nazareth. Yeah. 
So you heard that John was crazy. Which is upon the sea coast and the borders of Zebulon, Zebulon, and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, "The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of, of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them uh, which sat in the region of the uh, region and shadow of death." light has sprung up now look at look what it says 17 from that time jesus began to preach uh what happened uh yeah and to and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand see so he began his ministry after he knew that john the baptist was in prison he didn't he didn't uh try to rescue him he <laughs> so if that was one of his disciples <laughs> He would have saved them. He he didn't leave Peter in jail. He didn't leave Paul in jail. That was one of his own. He said, "Yeah, we can read Acts 16 and see what happened." With, well, you know, we kind of know that area already, but I like reading that a little bit. Um, go to like 25 or something. Um, yeah, like 25. Paul prayed because who? Because God heareth us, the believers. Well, I mean, it's very clear in John 10, while you in there, it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John the Baptist never followed him. He's not yeah. his sheep. And he's the good shepherd. He would leave the 99 to go after the one. He didn't do that for John the Baptist. Yeah, they That's changed were loose. Let's set out. And nothing's too hard for God. So he left John. He got his head cut off. That says, it says a lot, man. Yeah. yeah, there's so many evidences, and then there's the the knowledge, the knowing that. Um, then he tells the father that I've never, I've never left any, I lost none of them that you have given me. <laughs> that he's least than the least, less than the least in the kingdom, and the kingdom is eternal. And then think about Matthew seven, where people will tell Jesus face to face, "Lord, Lord," he yeah. said, "I never knew you." Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people call Jesus Lord, but they're not saved there because they're believing in their works. There are many wonderful works. Even they, they say Lord to him. But um, if they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if, not, if they're believing in their works, trusting in their works, then that's a different, that's not the gospel. Yeah, no, I can say with 100% certainty that John the Baptist was not saved based on Matthew 11, 11 alone. But like, there's a lot of other scriptures that show it also. That's for and sure. Last point. Um, how the Gail, you mentioned how like God was even using some of the ir some of the evil spirits to go and do you know some of the things he needed done. So John bearing record is just exactly what it says. Um, he prepared the way for the Lord. Yep. John 17 12. While I was was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. <laughs> he didn't keep John and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled, which is Judas to me right there. That's giving me the answer that uh, Judas is lost. He's the son of perdition. But uh, John 17, 12. So John the Baptist was not part of the ones that he said none of them is lost. <laughs> he, he, he didn't keep John the Baptist. He left him in prison. To get his head cut off. Amen. Yeah, good study. Yeah. We have to be saved, but once we are, we can see clearly what the doctrine was what. So yeah. Even though Peter, <laughs> I mean, he denied Jesus three times. God Jesus could have left him, but he didn't. He came That's back true. for him. Peter went out, you know, uh, um, boating, but naked. Jesus had to come up to him and say, hey, Peter, you love me? Well, feed my sheep. If you love me, <laughs> take care of my flock. Do you love me? You know, so he never left him, even though he kept coming to him, kept coming to him. He, he yeah, uh, Quite a few uh, times in, script, in the scriptures when Peter um, did something wrong and Jesus yeah. would. You come and, and receive him again and forgive him and 
So get the he called him Satan, get the hand Satan or get behind yeah. me Satan. Oh him. yeah. Yep, that's another one. Yep. Peter did a lot of a lot of wrong, but you know but he didn't leave him. Shows yeah. God's love, you know, God's grace. Absolutely. Yeah, to his Never people. Him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To to his people. That's why the ones that he did. That's why it's that tells me a lot, too, that he left him in prison. That tells me, OK, he wasn't his. That the father gave him. It's interesting. John, the baptism came to Israel, too. Right. He was sent to the lost. He was sent to. Um, John, the Baptist sent to. uh Preach repentance to Israel, bring repentance to Israel. Preach repentance. Yep. yep, that's what he was sent to do. And make way, make his path straight. It's all works. Baptism of repentance, make his path straight for the uh, Messiah. John fulfilled his course. Yeah, God had a plan for him, right? He was, um, yes. Just like J Judas fulfilled his course, right? He did his yeah. job. Pilate, everybody, right? Yeah. I do think, yeah, Pilate is, uh, I know we're talking about John Baptist now, but. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pilate, definitely, I think it seems he believes the more you the more you read it. Or at least it's like a total different, like what God's word said is completely different than what, you know, what's taught out there in, in buildings and things where they say, you know, they put the blame on Pilate and then, um, Glorify John the Baptist and all these things like that, right? Like um, not 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 showing um, or preaching that it was the Jews who killed Jesus, or um, you know, putting the blame on Pilate, like I said, or uh, glorifying John the Baptist in a works based thing and water baptism and all that stuff. A lot of people out there think they have to be water baptized to go to heaven. Yeah, so that'd be your work. I've heard people say the Romans killed Jesus. That's not Jews, right? Well, Paul was a Roman Jew, so but it's not true though. It's the Jews. The the so that's what I'm saying. So because the Jews yeah, the, of of his of Jerusalem. So if you look at Acts 13, mm -hmm. yeah, of this man, uh, what was it? At? Yeah, twenty. Where is it at? Twenty three, twenty six. Man and brother, children of stock stock of Abraham, whosoever among you fear of God, words of salvation said, for they. Oh, that dwell at Jerusalem, see, and their rulers. So to me, it's it's, the, it's those from Jerusalem. That's what he makes it very clear. The ones that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers because they knew him not. See, there you go. Knew him not. John is clumped in with that. John the Baptist knew him not. That's a term that God uses to let you know who knew him not. Nor right. yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. See, the voices of the prophets. You see our prophets is there? Let's talk about the Old Testament. Let's not talk about John the Baptist. <laughs> you know, nor nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. So it's telling me that those those who are not Roman citizens, those were Jews or those that dwell at Jerusalem, and their rulers, they're the ones that crucified him and condemned him to the cross, not Pilate and the Romans. No. And um, what do you, because uh, uh, this, this low key came from uh, one of the other studies of the day, but I just want to get the scripture because uh, he, someone believes or other people might believe that uh, when you believe you're justified, but then you got to still keep the law in terms of keeping the Sabbath and all of that, which I know we don't have to. Uh, but the, isn't there a scripture that kind of says like, obviously Jesus fulfilled the law and then like, like in him, the law, like we don't have to keep following those laws. Because he fulfilled Christ it. It's the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Amen. But then people would say that and be like, "Well, we got to still keep the Sabbath if you if you can keep it." Like, yeah. no. don't don't sin or yeah, yeah. keep the Sabbath is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they don't know what the law is in Scripture. So when he talks about the law and the prophets, he's talking about Moses, the books of Moses, um, and which is Matthew, Mark. I mean, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The law are the books. So if you look at, so if you look, he said, if, if you would have believed Moses, he's talking about the scripture, the first five books of the law, you know, he's telling them that. So where's that at? I'm just going to point this one out real quick is in Acts, I'll go right there, uh, Acts 3, yeah. 3, 12, uh, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Is talking to the men of Israel. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> 
son yeah. Jesus to be delivered up. Amen. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer, murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life. So he's showing who, who did that. Um, in the presence of Pilate. And he was determined to let him go, it said. Men of Israel, yeah, that's it. It says and Pilate was determined to let him go. Yeah. And, yeah, that's right. And the one you mentioned, Michael, um Yeah, I posted it in there. So whenever you're ready, I think it was John 5, 46. So I was just referring to that. Yeah. So had they didn't believe Moses. So Moses is writing. So that's the law. <laughs> you know. And then it talks about the law and the prophets. Um, so he's he's not he's not talking about a specific law. No, the law starts with in the garden <laughs> when he told him not to eat from the tree of knowledge good and evil. Um starts with Noah. So, and then Abraham, then uh, then Moses, you know, or Jacob, Moses, you know. So, you know, God has given His commandments to men throughout all the Scripture. Yeah, the law is all the all the commandments, right? All of God's commandments. Yeah, exactly. So, this is, um, four seven twelve here in Romans. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Um. I think he kind of uses the law and commandment sort of interchangeably throughout Romans 7, sort of. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Yeah. Yeah, the commandment comes first, and then the law is what applies, you know, here on this earth. So yeah. the commandment is given to his apostle, or I mean his prophet, and that prophet gives us the law. So he told Adam what he commanded Adam not to eat, but it became a law to her, to Eve, because she wasn't there to hear the commandment. She heard the law from, from it, you know, from Adam. Same thing with Moses. God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses and it became their law, the Israel children. So he spoke to, to Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and Aaron spoke to the people. I think Hebrews too talks about um not Hebrews too but Hebrews also talks about um how Jesus is at arrest the rest of the people of God and um there are, uh, lines in Hebrews talking about um sort of uh, we're not not under the Sabbath anymore and there's there's scriptures that talk about um you know uh, I gotta look it up so I'm not sort of off the top of my head but. Maybe it can help me find it is to do with um, let every brethren be uh, uh, sure in his own mind, like about days, keeping days. And he talks about, um, I'm afraid of you, you keep days, things like that, days and weeks and months and Sabbaths, and things like that. What What's the topic concerning or what do you mean? Days and weeks uh, and months? What about? He brought up um, about if people out there think that uh, they're free from the law, but they have to keep the Sabbath or something like that. They don't, they don't consider the Sabbath being part of the law. They don't think they're, they don't think they have to keep the law to go to heaven. I think they're justified from all things, but they think they have to keep the Sabbath also. Well, that's part of the law. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of the 10 commandments. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely part of the law. So, right. Right. In Matthew 22, 40 says on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. <laughs> so the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Yeah. All the mind with all thy strength and love thy neighbor as thyself. So when he says law, and then notice it doesn't say laws with an S. It says the law, singular, because it's all considered the law. <laughs> he doesn't say the laws. I don't yeah. think it ever says the laws. Let me look and do a word search on that real quick. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Oh, it does. Let's see. It's got five in the thing says, And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God, is in thy hand set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God. And teach them, teaching them that know them not. 
written among the laws of the Persians. So that's their laws. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken every uh, everlasting covenant. So yeah, and the New Testament never mentions laws with the nest, and the Old Testament does five times. The laws there, and they're talking about the Persian laws. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well. Behold, within the eyes and hear within the ears all that I say unto thee concerning the ordinance of the house of the Lord and all the laws thereof. And mark well the entering in of the house. With, so it mentions it five times with laws with the nest. But, you know, in, in the New Testament, when he's talking about the law, he's talking about the law, sing, you know, singular law. You know, so it's all, he it doesn't divide them. It seems almost like if you can talk about um, today's world is like, yeah, there's the law, right? Like that encompasses the traffic laws and the, you know, um, every other law of the land. You can say that's the law. Well, that's another good point. You know, people are confused with what's going on with this COVID and all this stuff. Should they follow? Should they wear a mask and all that kind of stuff? Um but if you look, we looked at this uh, a while, uh, the other, I don't know, a few, a few weeks ago, Romans 13. I found this one here too, Kale. I'll go there after, but about the, uh, you, you observe days and months and times and years. Oh, okay. Sorry, Romans 13, is it? Yeah, see, it says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Amen. So that we're supposed to be subject unto the higher powers because the ones that are there are ordained of God. So we should follow, even though you may not like the, the you know, whoever your leader is, ours is, is our um, president. You know, some people, you know, you're not going to always be liked, but you, you should you should always follow those laws uh, that are written. Whosoever, therefore, resists of the power, resists of the ordinance of God. See, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So we should follow. We should be law abiding citizens. We should be the best citizens, you know, that this country has seen or any country that you're in is seen. Yes, we're law abiding citizens, not ordinances of man now we'll look at that again uh, as well in uh first peter or second peter follow every ordinance of man but it says for the lord's sake not for man's sake now for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil wilt thou then be afraid of the power do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same for he uh is the minister of god to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. See, so we should be doing good. And so our, our belief is not a free will to just uh, live in sin because you should be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. So that's another thing. So you can sleep good at night. For for this cause, pay ye tribute also. So you should pay your 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 not tithe, your taxes. <laughs> you know, ask uh, uh, what's his name that uh, Doctor Dino. He been, he went in prison because he wasn't paying his taxes. Mm -hmm. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon the very thing. Render therefore all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. See, so that's dealing with the law. Not now. Not what, uh, you know, remember Peter, and as it says, should we follow man or follow God? Oh, should I read that? I was thinking that what the law he's talking about is uh, not today's uh, traffic laws, but like, I mean, is every ordinance of man and higher powers is probably that. But uh, here fulfilling the law is to do with, I think, loving, loving a neighbor and loving God. Yeah, yeah, fulfilling fulfilling that law, yeah. But we should we should definitely follow the law of, of the land because God is that's the powers, that's the ordained powers. Those laws are powerful. They're, I mean, you can prevent people from coming, you go to prison, you can prevent people from coming in or going out. That's the power. So that those powers are given by God. Those are God-given powers. Our freedom and our liberty is God-given. 
So that's why we should not give up that power to be free and that freedom of speech and those kind of things. So that's what we should go by the the uh, Constitution, you know, when it comes to that, not these new ordinances of man. Now, where, where's that one? And where it says the ordinance of man to the king supreme. Then Peter, first Peter, second Peter two or something like that. Yeah, second Peter, uh, first Peter two. Oh, you found it? Okay, cool. Yeah. Thirteen, I think. Yeah, right there. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. So if you just hit period there, then you then you should follow the, all the COVID rules. <laughs> but there's no period there. Continues. It says for the Lord's sake. That's COVID rule is not for the Lord's sake. That's actually for the Antichrist's sake. That's to usher in the Antichrist. <laughs> See, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. That goes back to Romans 13. See, and for the praise of them that do well for so for so is the will of God that with well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty. See, we should walk with our liberty and freedom, but not for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. So we should be free to serve God and don't let anyone, you know, say, well, well, you shouldn't talk about Jesus. No, no, I'm free to do that. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. But the ordinance of man has to be for the Lord's sake. So like when Peter uh, said, hey, should we follow man or follow God? They chose to do what the Lord's sake was. They told him not to preach in, in the name of the Lord. And they, they and they went against that ordinance of man. So I'm going against the ordinance of man that tells me to wear a mask because I don't have to. That's against my liberty, and I choose not to. Well, if they were to write that into the law, and now it's a law of the land, is that something that they still wouldn't have to do because it's imposing on your liberty? Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. Um, they're trying to, and that's what it says. The the, the uh, antichrist is going to seek to change laws and times. See, so yeah, they're they're seeking to do that. That's what this that's what this whole um, rioting is all about. What are they saying? Change the law. You know, it's all to change the law. He's going to seek to do that. He is he going to be able to do that? No, he's going to cause all. He's causing all, not the law. So I don't believe it will be written in the law. And anything that's written in the law, we should go by the law. I agree that we should go by whatever is written in the law. But remember, look at the sake. That's why God gave you that that uh, thing of Daniel, yeah. right? And three was it? Yeah. Um, well, not so much in Daniel three, but after that, when he right before he went to the, I think that's five when he went to the uh, lion's den. Yep, we can go there. I just want to read yeah. this. You mentioned here, go ahead, go ahead. and the apostles answered and said, "We ought to obey God rather than men." There you go. I couldn't find it. Where's that five? Yeah. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, "We ought to obey God rather than men." See, so if God is ordaining something, and he's, then we should obey Him. So we do it for the Lord's sake, not for man's sake. So man is deciding. Well, you should do this, and it's for the greater good of you know the community. No, thank you. I'm okay. I'll take my I'll take my chances. You know, I wonder something about if it's um, if Peter and um, people back then, if they were like, was was the law that uh, say like the high priests and uh, others here were telling them not to preach in that name and things like that? Would would that commandment coming down? Sorry, was that commandment coming down? Was that like were they like the rulers of the, like the land, or was it like the Romans had the law of the land and then this was like a religious? law or something because that because confused me because P peter like they're described as jews but they're believers so i didn't know if they were 
brought before the Sanhedrin and the Pharisee or whomever and the religious leaders. And like those religious leaders actually had the law of the land or if it was another law writing government that did. What, what says the law? I'm sorry. I was looking up something while you're talking. Sorry. Like I never studied it out, I guess, but I'm wondering if like, cause when, when the high priest saying, asked, did we not straightly command, they commanded them. Right. You, but, yeah, they, they, they like the government body there. For them, or was yeah, they, they were the um, yeah, they were the governing bodies of the of their people of their land, yeah, well, yeah just the Jews, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they straightly commanded him. <laughs> it don't care what I don't care what the man says. You should not teach in this name. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. See, and that's what we're gonna do. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Well, it is. <laughs> and you guys said it. You said, let this blood be on us and our. People. But if you scroll up, you'll 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 see who it was because he, he told him. I think they put him in a prison and they get let got let go. Then went went the captain with the officers and brought them. See, so this was this was political power, and they went against it. See, the yeah. officers brought them without violence for the fear of the people, lest they should have been stoned. See, these weren't just common people. They were working for the government. This reminds they me had brought them, they sat them before the council, see? And the high priest asked them. And see? So it's right there. It reminds me also about, like, in Daniel, how it's a, a command, like, or almost like um, a declaration, not, um, or like a, just a command, not a, not a written law, like not a law of the land. Like they didn't say they passed it into law. Like they didn't write it down and. Yeah, exactly. Just like in Daniel three, yeah, he it was a decree. Is what what the word was? Yeah, he made yeah. that decree. Yeah. You know, the 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 herald, hear ye, hear ye. You know, so this is what this is what the uh, you know King Nebuchadnezzar wants you to do. Well, no, you don't follow what King Nebuchadnezzar wants. You follow what the law of the land is because God has put that there with power. Yeah. That's really, really interesting because a lot of people are just going by whatever the government says. Yep. And even if they are meeting up, intention yeah. to read, reading these scriptures wrongly to say we should do whatever the government says at all times because we're being, you know, submitting to ordinances, man, and powers that, you know, the cop put yeah. there. But well, the government's going to tell you to take the mark of the beast. So, you, know, you go ahead and follow the government or you follow God. Which, which one the law is the land, but not the necessarily the commandments or the suggestions or other things that they aren't in the law itself it was uh daniel 6 the first like uh maybe 10 lines but yeah yep another decree <laughs> it's not a law <laughs> oh man this is deep boy i don't know if you want to look at that oh yeah daniel 6 but we'll scroll up see i was in it, it sets the pace so right here it pleased darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage then this daniel was preferred above the presidents see that see we have presidents today so we're getting set up for the you know for the uh just like the nebuchadnezzar was over the presidents um, so yes, there's going to be presidents, uh, 10 kingdoms, but anyway, and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Oh man, when you do that, boy, you're going to have haters. Just like we have haters. Then the presidents, oh, you're, they're rich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. See, they're looking for an opportunity, just like they're doing. They're always watching the videos and all this kind of stuff. They're just trying to find something against you. Don't worry, they're gonna keep doing it. They didn't. This is nothing new under the sun. But they could find none, none occasion nor fault. <laughs> they can't find a fault. They're gonna make up something. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. See. Oh, he thinks he's always right. Okay, that's exactly what they were saying. They say, yeah, nothing new under the sun. Same old devil. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. <laughs> there you go. So, hey, 
They want to go against scripture. They want to say study, study all these things of what, what we're saying. So they want to go against what we're saying. Then these presidents and princes assembled, uh, assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and counselors and the captains have consulted together. See, this is what you call in scripture a conspiracy. They're conspiring against <laughs> against them. That's that's real. Have consulted together to establish a royal statute. See, a real statute. This is not a law. And to make a firm decree. This is not a law. <laughs> See, that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So he was cast into the den of lions because this man made decree. And it was all based off of hate of the man of God. That's what's going on. Now, look, look, listen to this. Now, O king, establish the decree. The king established the decree. This is not law. This is an ordinance of man, but not for the Lord's sake. It was for these men's sake. See? And sign the writing. So he's signing the decree. It's written. It's still not law that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter if not. See? So the, the law doesn't alter. His, the decree does see, so they're doing it according to their their law, the Medes and the Persians. They're trying to put their law on another people. See, and that's what's going on here. It's a lot of Sharia law going on. It's a lot of Islamic law. Um, wherefore, King? That's why everyone's looking like a Muslim, putting those masks on. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. It's never caused it a law. Now, when Daniel knew, see, we're not ignorant. When he knew, the Bible wants you to know that Daniel knew. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he, he was not ignorant. He knew it, but he chose not to follow it. He went into his house. As soon as he knew it, what did he do? He got scared. No, he went into his house and his windows being open. This is boldly standing for the Lord in his chamber toward Jerusalem, making certain that they can see he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day, just in case you didn't catch the first two and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He didn't change a thing in the face of all of these haters and the conspirators. That's what I get from the scripture. I go by the word of God. I'm not going to put on a Islam face mask. You guys can do it if you want. I'm not going to look like a, a Muslim. And that's Sharia law going on. Well, it's interesting the scriptures talk about uh, being a shameful man to have long hair. And the reason being is that he's made in the image of God. Like long hair would hide your head, right? Hide your face, I would think. But these masks are covering people's faces. God is made, man is made in the image of God. But the question is, like a royal statute, would that not be that would not be a law then? A statute? It's, it's uh, a royal statute. No, it doesn't say law. What is a statute? So that might be like a, another example of how today's English is, you know, the meanings of the words have been twisted compared to what God said, I guess. Um statute and ordinance again it doesn't matter it's not according to the lord even if it was it's just not according to the lord so there's going to be uh he's going to cause a fall to 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 uh take the mark of the beast rich or poor doesn't matter can't buy or sell without it so it's uh it's from man it's not from from god but i don't think statute is a law maybe a certain order that they that they want you to do and there's a lot of new ordinances and statutes and decrees. It ain't from God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First one is um, they're talking about this, you know, they're all pushing this vaccine, like all the news and everybody wants, you know. I ain't taking that thing. No, no, no. God forbid. It's, but but they're all pushing it on the public, right? Like, But I was watching some of what they want to do is um, put it on people so that it leaves like a mark on their skin so that they people can tell that they got it. So that they can go out and shop and stuff, right? Like Woo! in the future, it's worse. 
Woo! Right, like it's gonna be like a barcode on people's skin. Oh, that, they're getting them ready. Like, built in the needle, like that's how they're manufacturing stuff. Yep, they're getting them ready. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. Um, I saw this uh post or, or like earlier this morning. It was somebody on Fox News. It was like a quick clip. I didn't see the full thing, but the anchor was like, you know how they always prep you and they want to push the news and all that. He's talking to a guy interviewing him saying, yeah, you know, with everything going on with the pandemic, the new world order is going to come after this. What is your thoughts on? He just skipped like right past new <laughs> world order. <laughs> they don't care. I actually interview this man. I'm just like, wow. Yeah. yeah those those they, don't, they don't, they don't, they're just blatant now because the people can't do anything anyway now. I guess past the point where it's like we never never could do anything about. It. That's the whole point. Say wants you to fight or lose in battle. It, Jesus is authoring this thing, <laughs> buddy. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. The only thing we should be doing and can do is preach that gospel freely. Right. And let's yeah. get that yeah. So I mean, it doesn't matter, man. God is the one authoring this. You know, God is the one that gave uh when he, he's the one that gave Israel over to King Nebuchadnezzar. There was no power for Nebuchadnezzar other than when God gave him the power to take over Israel <laughs> because Israel turned their backs on them. They worship idols. So God said, okay, I gave you victory. Now I'm going to take it away. I gave you this land. Now I'm going to take it away from you. After King Solomon, King Solomon did idols. He rent the, the um, kingdom from his hand. Then he split it in two. Became Judah and 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 um, Israel, and then they continued to do wickedly, king after king, and God rent the kingdom and the and the land from the people and gave it over to Nebuchadnezzar. So no, guess what? He's giving this is Jacob's trouble. He's giving Antichrist his limited time period. That's why I said Satan knows that he has a short time period. So he's given them a short time period to do his work. And he's doing the work of the Lord because the Lord is the one that this, this is an evil day. This is the day of the Lord. Remember, the day of the Lord is an evil day. So he's the one that's bringing these evil spirits to do these things. So there, there is no fight against it. <laughs> no, this is no that is coming. And what do we do? Your only hope is Jesus. Believe on Jesus. Right. Through Jesus, not these Jesus is that. These other people are preaching. No, it's the Jesus of the King James Bible, who is the everlasting father that was manifest in the flesh as the son of God, the son of man. He's not just the son of God. He's not just the Christ. He is both Lord and God. He is the everlasting father. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is the Holy One of God. He is Jesus. Amen. He came into his own, his own received him not. The Jews had him killed. Man, Christ Jesus died for the sins of the world. He's buried, rose again the third day. And after that, seen by witnesses, all for the forgiveness of sins. He believed that gospel to receive the free gift of eternal life and salvation forever. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Yeah, I was just making a point. Uh, I think the, they're just more blatant about it to the general public. Now that things are getting worse in the world, I guess they're just, it's just getting more and more, I guess. That's all I'm trying to point I was making there, but yeah, I meant what you're saying there. Kilo. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not, we're not here to change the system. We're not here to fight anybody or anything or we have a, shouldn't be uh, out there rioting. Spiritual battle. We got to put on the whole armor of God. We got um, wages of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God's pulling down strongholds. Yeah. We got to put on the whole arm of God. We're 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 soldiers, fellow soldiers, but we're not here to change the world system or anything like that. It's preaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want the new world order to come in because that means it's getting close to Jesus come back. So, well, we'll be <laughs> in before the new world order comes in. So, bring it in. You know, but this world is not our world. <laughs> we're looking for the new world to come, That's not right. this world. <laughs> they control the power and rule over. You know, the few people rule over the the many. You know, in some tyrannical thing, and it's all a whole new thing. Like, but they think that this world's going to last forever. Like, they go for the money and the power and all that this world has to offer, but it's all going to fade away. They don't know if Jesus is going to come back and judge.
But yeah, it's interesting to watch though, because you know you got a perspective from as a believer, right? God give you understanding, wisdom, and just sort of how the world is uh, shaping to be in these days. Yeah, definitely not taking any vaccine. That's for sure. Won't go, never, you know. Don't you believe it? <laughs> from Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Don't believe it, buddy. Stay away from that stuff. That's a good point too about the the people in power. They're they're there. God put them there. You know, even if they're they're doing whatever they're doing, it's um God put them there. Jesus answered, "Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin." Amen. <laughs> Your presidents, prime minister, <laughs> who delivered them unto him? <laughs> the Jewish council. They got the greater sin. Even Jesus yeah. was making that known. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that, they're all in power. You know, Pharaoh didn't have power until you know God. God put him in that position. You know, so he only had the power that God gave him. And God's the one that hardened his heart because you know he wanted to make a point. You know, and making he show his his power that hey, he he saved his people from that. So I mean, it, this you know, people just uh. You know they're not in their word. Man, it's like word of God is like so powerful. All Jesus had to say was that, right? Pilate's like, like no, no, not that I have power to crucify. He's like, you know, telling Jesus about the power that he had for him, and Jesus just telling him how, you know, he couldn't even have that power except it was given to him. And then from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Yeah, the more you study about it, it seems Pilate really believed, or at least, you know. At least wasn't the person that you know men make him, men in the world make him out to be. And he's still these dudes still uh, hitting hitting chatting up, huh? I'm trying to hit you guys up. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Yep, Vic was hitting me up. Yeah, and I uh, just he was like, "What are you doing, bro?" <laughs> And I'm just like in the study, man. And he joined. He was in the study. Michael let him in, but he I left pretty I quick. Saw him. Oh, okay. When oh. that happened tonight, you mean? Where did Bjorn go? No, Bjorn dropped off a few times tonight and came back just right after. He might be right back. But oh, okay. There he is. Yeah, come right back. Sorry about that. I'm trying to juggle. I didn't see him here tonight, Bjorn. What's that? I didn't see him here tonight. You. You said I let him in. You let him in. Oh, maybe I wasn't looking. I just clicked. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see. Yeah, I thought I saw him in. I wasn't sure. And then it went away. So I was like, oh, okay. I know. It was right when Mike was getting grilled about John the Baptist. I was going to oh. ask Vic. <laughs> hey, guys, I'll be you right. Vic, do you believe John the Baptist is saved? After <laughs> that, man, that's he it all. Lost, man. Yeah. He believe in all that stuff. They believe in, man. Vic don't know. Yeah. He's a compulsive liar. I, I feel like um, all these guys, they're just stuck in stuck in sin. Yep. That's really what it is. And they're emb embarrassed and ashamed of it. And so yep. they make it worse yep. by falling for these wiles. So maybe there's a few who are saved. I think there are for sure. But I think they're just in the snare of the devil. Um, yeah. So, but I know Zach is a, it's sad because it's just like, Zach is leading these guys, you know, yeah, down this path of confusion, one thing to another thing to another thing. He keeps now he's now he's trying to get on page with us, uh, saying that uh, Jesus uh, is Jesus uh, is uh, a man. He keeps changing his thing, man. Yeah, now I wouldn't trust him. He's just saying anything to get people away from you or I. I'm actually trying to get, grab you. He he just hates me. And that's fine. He's a he you a lot. Yeah, he won't talk to me. He's just hurt, and I get it. That's fine. You can be hurt all you want to, but the truth is the truth. The truth hurts, you know. So, you know, he's afraid to talk. That's fine. He wants to go around the back and hide, and you know, do all that kind of stuff. He's he, he's childish. He's very childish. So it's just sad, but we just keep on moving on. I have mean, seen it before. He's not the first. He won't be the last. Now he's become a troll, just like the rest of them. Keep on trolling. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, sorry about that, Bjorn, earlier. I just uh, wasn't, I, I don't know, I was talking about um, not not being um, willing to say I believe something 100% unless I see it, but uh, I do see it. I, my apologies. Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's good to have an opinion. I it's okay to that, be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think that like some of the, it's, you know, and I hate to say it, I, you know, if we don't take an opinion and it's almost like we're too prideful to be in a position where we could be wrong. But the fact is the matter is we are wrong a lot of times. Yeah. And so just be open to that and be humble to that and be humble to correction. So I, I have more respect for someone that comes in, comes in hot and just, you know, says Jesus is not God and someone who straddles. So. Oh, I'm opposite. I would say I have more respect for somebody who says I don't know if they don't know, other than saying that's true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, no, I mean, yeah. I just, but he, but he like, was saying that someone that doesn't say I don't know and straddles, see the stra- the lukewarm. Yeah. So he he and he's saying like what Scripture's saying: you rather you hot or cold than lukewarm, because saying I don't know is actually taking a position that you don't know. You're actually taking that's a true. position where is if you're saying, but if you're saying oh, it could be this, it could be this. You know, it could be that, and, and you're straddling the fence. I see this, but and you're talking in both. That's lukewarm. You're kind of talking. You're neither hot nor cold. You're kind of both. That's a double-minded man is unstable in his mind. And, 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 and every, uh, unstable what? Double-minded man is a stable. In all his ways? In all his ways. Yeah, there you go. So that's what it, that's what we're talking about, and there's a lot of that. Gerard was a, was a, uh, a, a prime example of that. You know, couldn't make a decision. And it's okay to make a stance. And then guess what? That's the best way to learn. When you say, no, I believe it's this. And then you show the evidence to prove that wrong. You won't believe that way anymore because it's been proven wrong. But if you don't take a stance, then you're going to fall for the wiles. You're going to be like, okay, well, this looks, yeah, I'm going to go over there. You're going to fall for every whim of doctrine. But if you have a doctrine and you say two plus two equals three until you show me that it doesn't equal three, the fact the second you are shown that it doesn't equal three, you will never go back to that understanding again. See that? So that's why you should take a stance. And, and what I do is I try to push people to make a stance. I try to push them out of, and those are the people I have the most problem with. Think of Gerard. Think of uh, Zach. Think of all of all the ones that have an issue with me are the lukewarm people. And I'm doing it God's way because God is the one that's going to say, you know what? I would rather you this way or that because he's going to reject the lukewarm person. And that's how I am. I'm going to push you out. You know, you, I'm going to either push you up to the truth or push you out. So I, I don't go, I'm not hard against the people that are far against us. You know, people are like, well, how could you talk to Cedric again? Cause he has a position. He has a point. And it's actually easier for me to talk to them to prove that point wrong because the listener can hear how drastic and how far off he is than from the gospel, than what's what's written in the scripture. But the subtle ones that are lukewarm is hard to tell. And those are the ones that I'm pushing and saying, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. you're gonna make an answer. You're gonna make an answer. And that's what they resent me for. And that's what that those are the people that give me the most resentment and, and hate and anguish. But you know what? I'm not doing it for them. I'm I'm gonna be glorified before God because I'm doing it his way. Yeah, Jesus answered a lot, or sorry, asked a lot of pointed questions. And uh, to your point is, I don't know, is is definitely a, a stance for sure. But yeah, Jesus definitely did that too, as our example is ask pointed questions. Yeah, I just want to know, I was just saying, apologize Bjorn for, uh, for if I was being uh, not listening or something like that. Usually I just hear whatever everybody's got to say, but I think I was a bit stuck in my, in my, I don't, my, I don't know, but because um, a lot of the evidence that was being shown is like I already seen these things. I've already seen these things. I you know, but uh, the one you showed though, Matthew eleven eleven, that's that's the uh, that shows it for me. So, anyways, I don't know if that uh, apology is even necessary or or anything like that. I just uh, I felt maybe at that time I was being a bit um, stubborn. Anyway, I don't. He's on mute. I don't know if he knows. That mute. He, he's talking to you, Bjorn. 
don't know if he if he's on or whatever. Okay, no worries. But I hear you. I hear yep. you. Cool, That's cool. Okay, hey, you know, we appreciate it. Well, I appreciate that you always go by the scriptures, and we all can get stubborn at time or out of character. Like last night, I got out of character talking with this guy, this um, Hebrew Israelite dude or whatever. He called me the N word, and I was like, "Whoa!" And I got out of character, you know. So, I mean, we all at one point we're we're human, we're man, whatever. We're not God, <laughs> we're not perfect, and we all can uh, make mistakes. So that's that's okay. But as long as we are grounded by the scripture, then we're good. We're good to go. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bjorn, he's on mute. He might be doing dealing with something or whatever. Bjorn's having uh, gonna have a child soon. In the earth, yeah, you never know, it might be coming right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Any it's day, now. probably. In, it's, I think it's doing the next, is he said right around the uh, July, the, July 9th, the I think he told me. huh? I think he told me July 9th, if I remember correct. Yeah, so it's like the week of the barbecue because we end on the 8th, so that Friday it should come. But a hey, at this stage, the baby can come anytime, it can come a couple of weeks early, yeah. maybe even a couple of weeks late. Yeah, that's awesome. That's exciting. God is blessing. And uh, Dom has got a new place. You got a new place. You know? Yeah, we're blessed. Yeah, Dom too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's good, man. God is blessing, man. Oh, yeah, he dropped off. <laughs> well, cool. I think we covered quite a bit, man. It's good to do a study with you. You too, Kel. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So. All right, I'll finish with my my gospel before I go. I believe the gospel that Paul preached. You know, I believe that Paul preached um, about God. I believe that he preached about the fact that God, the the mystery of godliness is that God was manifest in the flesh. Um, I believe that that Jesus is the name of God. Jesus, the name of the everlasting Father. Jesus is the name of the Son. Jesus, the name of the Holy Ghost. And so Jesus was manifest in the flesh and he came unto his own and his own received him not. He was crucified on the cross. He died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried for three days and three nights, not two and a half, three days and three nights. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. He was seen risen by his witnesses just like it is his faith, his grace, his mercy. I mean, those are his witnesses. That's part of the gospel. If you don't believe in his witnesses, you don't have his salvation. So I believe that Jesus is our savior. He is the Holy One. He is the God man. He is God that was manifest as a man. And so um, I thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. And I pray that anyone listening that does not believe that gospel, you've pricked their hearts. And today they can believe and have eternal life. Thank you. Amen, brother. What great, what great, what great love God has for the, had for the world has for us. So is uh, for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen, brother. I appreciate it, Kel. Amen. God bless. Yeah, God bless her.